Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on Python programming. Uh, now that we have gotten all the introductions and the basics and the installations uh, regarding Python aside, uh, let's get right, let's get down to actually creating our first script. So now the question is, uh, how do we actually start doing this task of creating our first Python script? How do we, how do we realize uh, now that we've installed uh, Python, like uh, now let's, how do we start doing something? So the answer to that question is that typically when you're working on Python, the one of the most basic things that you can do is create a Python script and execute a script. A script is essentially a sequence of commands and instructions that you give for Python to run and execute to give you a certain result. So I will show you how you can create a Python script. Now there are multiple ways of creating a Python script. You can create it directly from command line, which is obviously something I would not recommend because it is not convenient and easy and it's not very useful for a beginner. Another way is using a text editor such as the one I have opened right now, which is the notepad plus plus text editor. Now it's very important to not get confused uh, between notepad plus plus and the standard notepad that comes with your uh, windows uh, or wordpad for that matter in fact text editors such as notepad and wordpad um, that you are more familiar with create text and files in a form that is called rich text now rich text is something uh, is text that uh, contains formatting and fonts which is actually a hindrance when it comes to creating actual code. So what we need is a text editor that creates or writes text in what we call as plain text. Uh, plain text is obviously text which does not contain these fonts and these formattings uh, and it only respects white spaces and indentations, those two being actually useful towards uh, creating code uh, unlike fonts and formatting which are only a visual thing. So Notepad++ is obviously a text editor that creates uh, plain text documents uh, that is very that was actually created with uh, programming in mind. Obviously, you can use a bunch of other text editors such as Wim and Atom, and you can Google for these. There are plenty of them. So, uh, without any further ado, let's create our first Python script. So, one of the most common, one of the most famous examples of your a first program in any program for that matter, not just Python, is creating a print statement that gives us a statement saying hello world. So in, in Python, this is how you would go about it, or this is the syntax you would use to create the statement. All right. Now, where it is very important when you are saving your Python program that you use the .py prefix. So, so if I were to save this, I can choose whatever folder I am going to choose. Yeah, this folder seems fine. So now I give the file name over here as say, I want to keep it as test. I need to prefix this with .py and this uh, tells any uh, sort of interpreter or anytime we need to read the script to know that it's a Python script, we need to add a .py. Otherwise it will not be treated as a Python script. It will be treated as some normal document sort of a thing. So now that I have stored it as .py, uh, I have created my first Python script. Now, uh, obviously the next question is I need to see uh, what happens when I execute this line, when I run this script essentially. So to see that, um, there are multiple ways. The first way that I will show you is a command line method, which is obviously, again, before we get into it, it's not something that I will be using to teach you. It's not something I would recommend you to st immediately start using. Um, but for the sake of uh, showing, I will show you how to execute a script in command line. Well, to do this, you go, since I have installed Anaconda in my system and I will be using Anaconda to uh, work in Python, what I will look for is something called the Anaconda prompt. As you can see, this is the option that I get, Anaconda prompt. Uh, this will essentially open you a command line uh, under the environment of Anaconda or Python. So in this, now I am already in the folder, I believe, that had my script. So uh, how do I call this script or how do I run this script? Well, the command is Python space, the name of my file, which was test. Of course, the prefix is very important. So I enter test.py. If you, if this was in a different folder, you would have to change your folders in command line, which is again, something that I might uh, show you later. But since my file is already in the folder that I am in, in my command line, I would just have to enter this command right now. So if I execute this, 
as you can see it's given me an output of hello world which is which is what i wanted i wanted it to print this uh, these two words and of course the command line is now waiting for the next command for me so this is uh, one of the most simple ways of or the most rudimentary ways of executing a python script now another question would be well this isn't the most visually appealing or uh, not the easy to read or easy to use way of um, executing scripts and i would agree and that's why i'm going to introduce a another technology or a software called the ide so the ide in python or in any programming language stands for integrated development environment it's essentially a software that not only allows us to run scripts but it allows us to create the scripts it allows us to debug it allows us to see outputs it allows us to see intermediate outputs uh, it allows us to do a wide variety of tools and tasks and uh, it comes with a bunch of robust features to enhance our python programming experience so let's let's see so i will show you a an ide called spider which comes bundled along with the anaconda distribution that i had uh, mentioned earlier so if i open the anaconda navigator as you can see the anaconda navigator shows me a bunch of technologies and options and i'm looking for something called the spider ide which is over here as you can see here it's a scientific python development environment uh, this is exactly what i'm looking for so i am looking to launch this so now that i've launched it you can see out here this is what an ide looks like now this looks very sophisticated and it's a, it's a one and any almost any ide is a wonderful software that where you can create your code you can debug your code you can check the results you can make adjustments changes and you can do a wide variety of tasks and functions with relation to your programming so this is the spider ide in particular and this is how it looks don't worry about the exact details just know that on this left hand pane is our current script that is open out here and out here we will get the results in this this is what we call a console a console essentially so now that we have, we have already created our script in notepad++ and i want to open that script and i want to see uh, how an i how it would uh, the result of that script would look in an ide so let's just open it so we can browse for our file and as i had uh, named it test this is the file over here i open this and as you can see out here in the left hand pane my script has opened and the command that I had given or had written is out over here now if i want to run this application i press this green button and as you can see the result of my my execution essentially is over here it's in slightly small font but as you can see over here uh, it says hello world and it's wait and the next line is essentially it's it's waiting for me to do another execution of the script and then it will give me new results so let's actually give the system new results so now that i have printed something called hello world let's let's change what's written over here let's say i will perform basic maths all right and let's actually perform the basic maths again don't worry about the details the syntax uh, what i'm exactly doing these are things that we will actually cover in the uh, in upcoming videos and modules so let's create a variable called a let's store a, a number 3 let's create a variable b store a number 5 all right let's create another variable c uh, which will store the result of what's in a and b in the addition of a and b all right and let's print the result or print what's in uh this variable c or what's the result of a plus b i will print a statement saying the result of the addition of 3 and 5 is all right and i will put my result over here as you can see uh i should get the result in this pane so let's execute this and you can see uh my first line is executed saying i will perform basic maths and the next line says the result of the addition of 3 and 5 is 8 so uh, this in this script what i've done is i have performed uh, two print statements and i have performed a basic expression some variable assignments uh, all of these things we will be doing later this is what i what i'm essentially trying to show you is that uh, ides are a very convenient way of uh, not only creating the scripts but actually seeing the results and then making adjustments as well we can come uh, we can create a completely new script we don't need to create a script from some special file or text editor uh, i can just create a new file here and this is my new script essentially so i can start working on with this new script right over here from the get go so ides are very powerful spider ide comes uh, bundled 
with Anaconda. There are uh, other IDEs such as the I IDLE IDE. It stands for um, Indicated uh, Development and Learning Environment. So the IDLE uh, IDE comes uh, as part of the uh, basic Python implementation that I had shown you in the previous video, where you, if you just installed a basic uh, Python uh, implementation, it would come along with a basic IDE known as IDLE or Integrated Development and Learning Environment. But of course, since we are using Python and that's what I would recommend, uh, it comes with a more robust IDE called Spider, uh, which is actually very, very helpful for scientific uh, and numeric applications um, and was designed specifically with that in mind. Now, uh, this is not the only way we can actually work with Python. There's another very interesting and uh, a very educative method of creating Python let's say Python programs. And it's something that I will be using extensively throughout this course to explain different concepts. So this technology is called, or this software is called uh, Notebooks. Now, before I get into the details, I will state, I will just open note, uh, a basic notebook. So the notebook that comes as part of Anaconda is called the Jupyter Notebook. And when I open or when I launch the Jupyter Notebook, this is what I get. Now, a very important feature or a yeah, a feature of notebooks is that notebooks uh, are a web browser or a web based application so you it's not something that you can use if you are offline or disconnected basically if you're disconnected from the internet it is something where which for which you would need an active uh, internet connection uh, however it is way more robust and it has very very good uh, properties that allow it to be used in education or for presentations and such. So as you can see, this is my Jupyter Notebook. These are a bunch of folders. You don't need to worry about what these are right now. I will show you how to create a fresh notebook. So if you go here, now you go to new and you select under notebook, the Python 3 option. It will open you your first notebook. As you can see, um, this line is essentially waiting for me to enter some sort of a command or a statement that I would give in a normal Python thing. Now, if you would have noticed the diff uh, in uh, until now, everything that we were doing involved us uh, creating a script, which was the whole series of commands and functions. So if I go back to my spider IDE, as you can see, like this is a whole script and this script contains multiple different uh, tasks and functions that are individually uh, being performed. So this is a separate print function. This is a separate addition, another separate print function. And for longer uh, programs or larger programs, you like, you'll have multiple different tasks being uh, done. And if you were using a script, you can only see the result of something like this by executing the whole thing at once. You cannot see exactly like, uh, what is the result of just this print statement or just this. Uh, it's not typically uh, what an IDE is used for. And this is where notebooks come in super handy. Uh, if I had to break down my previous script essentially, where I first did a print statement, where I said some random thing, say hello. Yeah, so if I execute this particular line, you can see it gives me the result. Now I want to do what is five plus three. It should give me the result over here, eight. Now the next, another part of your program might be storing five and three into variables. So I can do this and I can do this. So now this line will store the variables. Now I want to do the addition of what is five plus three, but I want to use the variables and I want to see what's the result. As you can see, a plus b means five plus three, which is eight. And I've essentially broken down various different parts of my previous script into, into its individual tasks. And I'm able to see what each part of that script does. And this is very good when it comes to making presentations or uh, trying to teach a class. So, I will personally be using notebooks a lot to explain different, different concepts of um, different concepts when it comes to Python. And I would recommend that you get used to uh, notebooks in general because uh, it's an amazing way to learn Python programming or programming in general, in fact. And again, as I had mentioned earlier, notebooks are something that it's an online uh, application. It's a web based application. So I will have to need a active internet connection to be able to work on a notebook, which could be a disadvantage if you do not have a consistent internet connection. And in that case, you would probably use your IDEs or text editors, which you can be used offline as well. Once again, I thank you for watching this video. 
if you like this video if you like these videos please do like and please do subscribe to the channel it really helps us in reaching more viewers and reaching more learners such as yourself and um, i really hope to see you in the next video